a really, really interesting game. Geelong and Collingwood, it was um, – Geelong definitely got out to – they looked good. Got to about a 20-point lead and then old man legs kicked in. And yeah. um, Collingwood, <laughs> Collingwood looked – uh, it was pretty much polar opposites to where I put them this year. I think I had them coming at 10th overall in my official ladder predictor, Chris. And, um, oh, Thanks, they mate. just had some real legs and dare. And they never, the, the, all of the, the, the belief they got from last year is instilled in them uh, in their house. So they kind of just, I was thinking you've accepted there, Chris, but um, instilled <laughs> to push through and, um, and overtake. So I thought they were really, really promising. And the key man that we all have to talk about is obviously Nick Dacos, the man with no attention, had the end of the game microphone in front of him and he pretty much was like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah, it was, it was good. I didn't get any attention tonight and I could just go around, run around, do what I wanted and play footy. And, he, you know, he welcomes attention if it comes, but I thought it was really quite funny because he's like, oh, yeah, it was nice. I had a, a good game. And, um, yeah, it was lovely. And Port Adelaide have come out, was it today, saying that they're going to put some work into him probably? Of course. Have so... Yeah, and if Port is successful, then all of a sudden everyone else is lining this, up because now this is it's, the, and if this it's, is the problem right now, isn't it? But it's also Dugowie was also extremely damaging. So then, which mm. way do you go, Chris? I was literally about to say that exact same thing. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, Nick Dacos wasn't best on ground though. I like, I think no. that we'd all say. I mean, I JDG. thought personally, I thought, um, yeah, Dugowie had an absolutely amazing game. I, I would say he wasn't best on ground either. I reckon Pendlebury was by far the best on ground. Set everyone up multiple times over the shoulder, handballs. His vision was Oh, relieved. ridiculous handball. His, his contest work inside was second to none. You know, don't get me wrong. I, Jordan Dugowie played well. I thought there was – this is crazy that we're still talking about Scott Pendlebury, this level of player. Mm. But I thought he was just unbelievably good. Um, and look, don't get me wrong. Yeah, Nick Dacos played well, but I, like again, if it wasn't him, it was Josh Dacos. Josh Dacos yeah, played yeah. equally as good in his role, and they they often were times waxing. I mean, we had winners all over the park. Bo McCreary had twenty disposals and looked like an absolute jet. Um, Tom Mitchell played his role perfectly, and I can get that Tom Mitchell every week. I don't think I've ever seen Tom Mitchell be that effective with his disposals. And he only had twenty one of them. And looked like he was everywhere, but he just won clearances. I think he had, um, uh, actually, I've got the numbers here. He had 10 clearances for the game. And mm. I think for the first time in life, I, don't even, can't, I wouldn't be able to tell you the exact stat, but I think last year we lost clearances like 14 games in a row. So that was a very big difference. To me, it looked like in the game that Collingwood um, were fit and, they were, and McRae came into the press conference the day before and he said, if you ask me, like, what in comparison to this time last year, what we were like, we are miles ahead. They are miles ahead of where they were last time. And I think that they rolled into the preseason pretty healthy with a pretty fit list and they've just exploded. Whereas Geelong are just taking their time to, to ramp back up because obviously they had a, first of all, they went that extra week. They probably came back a little bit later, all that stuff. All of it adds up. Um, and they, you know, they don't really need to fire in round one. I think that everybody knows that round one doesn't really matter, right? So, but it was Ooh. good showing for the boys. Some people say you don't have a leg to stand on, but I also say that sometimes you don't have a hand to land on. Oh, oh, God. oh that's is oh, it too no. early? So no, that was up. Too. So it's been listed as four <laughs> yeah. four compound fractures, um, and oh. he's out for eight to ten weeks. So he, he'll be back this so week. Jeremy Howe, really good for that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, that's um, so Jeremy Howe. What, what, that what I'd add with that, Chris, because I I thought Dugowie, I had Dugowie's best over Pendles just because the goals that he kicked at the, at the right moments there and that. and But, you know, you're splitting hairs. And that's where, like, was, we had some of the community want to start Dugowie because I thought he's the jet in the midfield. He's looking super fit. And that is yep. probably the fittest that he's looked in his career. And that's the damaging, like we've always said, you know, Kmart Dusty and, and that. But, yeah, he, you know, his movement around the ground, got into the, and then managed to, you know, get loose in that forward line into key positions. And um, so it'd be interesting to see what sort of attention he does get. And that, and that's a great debate where, or is it a case where say Port this week go, okay, here's either um, Horn Francis, um, Rosie, someone like that. You try to beat him on the other side because we don't think the yeah. goalie's got the defensive game. Make him work and, But we'll actually put oh. some time into Dacos. I, I reckon Horn to. Francis on Dagoe would be awesome. That explosive oh, type. Put oh, yeah. Titch and Ollie Wines together and then have whoever served Crispy and, and um, whatever's going on there would be absolutely um, unreal. And I do agree, if you're going to stop 
you might as well stop the CBA and tag that person and stop it from going into your into your uh, defensive line. Otherwise, yeah. it's like, oh, cool, I'll tag a defender, and then they win the clearance. It's like, good, well, that's great when they rebound it, you know, two minutes later. Yeah, so, interesting, I mean, Chris. So also on that, so with Nick Dacos, they, I mean, Brisbane just won by what ten goals? Uh, sorry, Port won by ten goals. Port, sorry, yeah, ten goals. Yeah, um, and <laughs> they let their halfbacks do whatever they wanted. They, they, yeah. So Rich, Rich was the highest scoring super coach player with twenty six disposals, including twenty three. Like he, they didn't care. They don't care when the ball's behind the line. They don't care who's got the ball. They just care who's entering it into the fifty, and that's where they start mm. to pressure up. So through the midfield and, and try to stop the ball movement. And that's where Dacos is more I've, that sort of player. Yeah. Where so I, yeah, I, I don't we're... really take that as into consideration. They're not putting a hard tag on him. They're not because they didn't do it last week when they were at, and, and like to half time, I was like, is someone going to get on Rich? Like he's just literally killing them. And then they decided not to. And then the second half, they just came out and they killed them from the midfield out. So I don't think they need to do anything with Dacos and I don't think they will, but I mean, proof's in the pudding. But I, I just think, yes, they've got like a, they'll have a defensive plan, but it's going to be a whole team thing, not just a specific player in mind. I think that um, it's more of a chance this week, Chris, because it's just, it's an away game at the MCG. And I know what you're saying. I think it'd probably be a more defensive plan, but it wouldn't actually surprise me if they go, okay, we're just going to lock down this guy. If it was Adelaide Oval, I think they back their system more. The, the, I, yeah, it's, I, look, and there's, there's so much to consider, but I look across like their running players, and this is their real strength. So right now, the Pies' real strength is they've got just run over the ground, and when they get the football, they're going lightning, right? So, you know, it's not just about stopping one player. So you got obviously you've got Nick Dacos, you've got Josh Dacos, you've got Jack Crisp, you've got Steel Sidebottom, you got uh, Bobby Hill. You've got Maynard. You've got McCreary. You've got Noble. You know all of these guys running. Why do you keep types. mentioning second-rate players? Because they all offer that run and carry style football, which they've obviously been playing. So um, IQ, obviously, as well. But um, obviously, anyway. So it's not about stopping one play with their run. It's that's their system. They're just going to get it and go. And so I think they've just got to be aware of that. Now, just on Dugowie before we move on, I have. I've also had a lot of people ask me about what I think about him. And I think he's an absolute no-go zone um, for Supercoach. So he scored 130, but he had to get three goals to get that. He had 25 disposals and eight marks, only two tackles and seven contested possessions out of that bunch. That's why you can't pick him because he only ever actually scores well when he kicks big goals and he's not going to get three goals a week. So And he's a midfielder and and only. And yeah, but yeah, he's and, only, and it's, not, yeah, not it's not just the three goals. Like, yeah, I can see him kicking three goals, but it's put them back in the um, contest just before, yeah, early in the third quarter, kicks the first goal straight after three quarter time to put the scores level and then puts the goal, like the icing on that. So yeah, those points are weighted so much more than, yeah, him, you know, kicking his three and they might be winning by five, six, seven goals. Yeah. All right. Here's the deal. So he's a mid only. He's horrible. I I say Dylan Moore as a forward is a better pick than Dugowie. There you go. Settled. Settled. Um, It's a shit pick. I don't think there's anyone. I say shit pick, but it's it's not. If he gets DPP, yeah, okay, that's worthwhile. But he's not getting it if he's going to keep playing mid. No, he's playing mid, so he's shit. Same same with Tom Mitchell. Obviously, I don't think again, like he's not really an option. Kick two goals for his one oh nine, which he never does. He had twenty one disposals. 21 disposals is, is remarkable with 10 clearances, by the way. I thought he was brilliant, but he's not super coach relevant this year, in my opinion. So just, just noted. Um, From a footy perspective, Chris, that's one of the better games I've seen Tom Mitchell play. And oh, I know, and like, absolutely th- the 100%. argument, and they were talking about it on the radio, like, oh, 40 touches. No, it still hurts you because it is 40 touches. I'm like, yeah, but this 20 touches, two goals, all those clearances, but actually. Yeah, the effect that he had was freeing up guys like your Dugowies and your Dacosses and that. Uh, that I thought it was much more positive than him running back to the packs and just, you know, the the one-two handball kind of situation and that. I thought it was yeah. brilliant. One we should probably talk, to, uh, top, talk on before we get off the pies is Darcy Cameron. So what we, we – I mean, I suppose none of us have known really what the split's ever going to be, um, but we got some some decent data out of it. So he was – the 68% ruck time overall, and he attended 62% CBAs, which means that he was preferred. Now, that's not – what we've found is that some games he's preferred and other games Cox is preferred. I still don't know where I sit with that, but his score is going to fluctuate. I don't hate it as an option, and I think that if you started, you'd be very happy with that. I mean, I think that basically matched Darcy 
for a hundred grand less. Um, I don't know where I sit with it, but I think if you, after next week, if he goes with a decent score, I think you could look at if you've got a bad ruck or maybe if you started Cherry or something like that, oh. you could probably look to transition Huntington. to Darcy. Yeah, there's, I mean, yeah, a forward that you could you could transition over. I mean, there's probably other guys in the forward line you might want to get. But, um, yeah, there's, there's heaps. If you didn't get Gorn, English, or uh, Wits. Wits, Wits, then I think that everyone else is probably supplementary to that. And you could probably look to sideways to Darcy if you need to. I don't think it's a must pick, but I think you can just keep an eye on it. Yeah, I, mate, on Friday night, I was spewing that I haven't gone Darcy and by, you know, Saturday night, I was like, oh, I don't actually care anymore. And that was the, <laughs> that was the thing because, you know, I think that, that's what we're talking about. He's probably that 95 to 100 guy. There's better for The forward options showed that they're going to be higher than that. But the rucks are just, they just can't. Usually rucks start slow into the season. And it's usually, it's been a trend for forever in Supercoach. And they're like, okay, it takes them a couple of weeks to warm up the big guys and they really hit the ground running. Well, didn't the rucks hit the ground running this week and that? And when you've already got, three of the big guys already 40 points ahead and there's no reason why they aren't going to dominate other teams where Darcy Cameron, I'm like, well, he's playing a guy like he pretty well played Stanley one out who isn't the great, like he's not a bad defensive ruck, but he's not one of the stronger rucks in the league. Like what's Darcy Cameron actually going to do against the better rucks? And that's what we've been saying the whole time. Like, yeah, he's probably going to go maybe 90 against those guys and that, and it's just not enough. Interesting. Yep. Speaking of not enough, um, Stuart didn't get enough yeah. games <laughs> into the start of the year. And we did know, you know, on the flip side, we said, hey, like that he does miss games occasionally, but it was more suspension, not injury. And I think Hawthorne, we probably all owe Hawthorne a check at this point for those that didn't start him uh, because we were worried about the tag. And poor Supercoach Mama was like, well, Geelong mm -hmm. faithful and wasn't sure if she was going with a heart or a head. And there was a, quite a lot of people. I think it was one of the most owned premium defenders outside of obviously Dacos, who I'll lightly consider a premium. Um, yeah, so that's really upsetting. 18 super coach points, so people will be looking at him. What was it, three or four weeks? I think he's out. Four to six. Which is, oh, okay, definitely a trade then, so we'll get into that a little bit later. And there are other couple but of people that we do need to touch on. Yeah, oh, yeah. three to four. Was that's I what really? I heard, three to four. I thought they talked four yeah. to six earlier. Well, I could. Um, well, I heard three yeah, well that's triple, what I heard but coming out earlier, but that's fine. I saw a report from Triple M saying three to four yesterday. But uh, I well, so I, th I thought they said on the news either way, today he's he was a, four to six. But anyway, either way, he's a trade. It's a trade. Um, the other one, yeah, he's a trade yep. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Depends Speaking what of news trades, service you go with. Tanner Bruin, uh, fifty-eight yeah. supercoach points. Looked like he wasn't too bad early on, but then kind of went from being a midfielder with CBA to so then out on the wing, and then the ball I don't think was really going through his wing that much. And I think the one chance he got kind of near it, someone sort of pushed him off the ball. So, um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they to make this one, guys. They definitely preferred Holmes, was... Holmes in there instead oh. of that. So he was, he was like the problem was like the catch just got dominated in that last quarter. So none of them scored in the last. But yeah, it was like Dangerfield, Holmes. Um, I'm trying to think of the couple of the other ones that were running through there. But yeah, yeah, it's funny. Tanner was definitely pushed aside in that second half. Well, apparently, he's getting the shake of the uh, CBAs because he lives closest to the stadium. He's uh, yeah, apparently it's closest to Holmes. <laughs> oh wow this guy. wow um Any boy. yeah it is it is what it is um look and Ratsy. I, I so with tanner i just um what i found was that uh Parfit could have um could have impacted his role so i found that once he came on he only i think had 18 i want to say 14 or 18 percent cba so didn't have a lot but it was definitely around the ball a lot more and i just feel like um, they flipped his role slightly once that happened. So whether or not that reverts back, whether or not he's even in the 22 is another question as well. I, I actually personally think that his role is gone this week. I think Jack Bowes comes in for him. So, um, yeah, I don't know how much he played all right. It just wasn't amazing. And you also got to consider they played against, you know, probably one of the other top four sides in the competition. So it's not like, and that midfield super strong. It's not like it wasn't anything to sneeze at. Um, maybe he was just not ready for that level, but maybe against say, you know, North Hawks, West Coast, etc. cetera, all, you know, those sort of teams, he would go really well and they could probably look to get him into those games. But um, I'm not sure of his draw. Well, who did Geelong play next week? Carlton. Got that there? Yeah. Yeah, the Blues, off. mate. They're going to get hammered inside. Like, I don't know yeah, if they're they will. running again. 
Like, I think, yeah, yeah Geelong... Well, it's interesting now, because a lot of Blues supporters are like, oh, my God, we're going to play Geelong next week. Now we've got Stewart, and that, and that and that Blues midfield up and about. It's an interesting, real interesting game. Yeah, because they're also missing... Um, who was the other tall defender that they um, missed missing from their back line? Um, yeah, DeConning, he's out as well. No, he yeah, got so copped a knock in this game. Is he also out? Well, we don't know yet. Okay, right. Now I was thinking about the other one. Um, Oh, it was just like a back pocket, I think, fairly tall. He was out. Um, okay, so that's Cole interesting. Um, still out. Yeah, Cole Jasny. So that makes it really interesting yeah. for their defensive line. Um, Chris is just going to turn his Spotify off. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Radagli is the other one we need to talk about as well, and he's um, an option that people were looking at heavily. He's scored a 55. He's a $174,000 ruck forward, which is where the appeal sort of comes in. Now people are looking at, well, with Stewart out, um, I thought Radaglia played a good game, but again, he's trying to get sort of intercepts and then trying to even handball when he, where possible to other people running past or just kicking it long. So, well, the coach uh, gave him look, um, like full nearly coach. I think he was the top coach's votes maybe from that game or close to from a Geelong perspective. Um, definitely, Kyle would obviously had those, but maybe well, well, I know Scott really praised him highly, and that was because you know he played such a great defensive role. But we were hoping he'd be more of an interceptor. But because of now their injuries, and especially if DeConning doesn't get up and, and Cole Jasin is still out, he's going to have to play lockdown defense. And that's why I had the six touches. Now, he did take some important intercept possessions, and I think all his possessions were intercepted in the end. I think Chris will know more about that. Um, uh, talking about Radigalia, most I think all six of his possessions yeah. might have been intercepts. Yeah. Uh, Pretty much. But that's and the problem. It's like, really how's he going to. So he's going to, his job security has now gone through the roof compared to what it was. We're worried about that. But the scoring potential has probably actually gone down because now he's going to have, and we saw late as the game went on, he was more saying to, you know, fist the ball and try to, you know, punch it away from defenders than trying to mark it because, you know, if they, and what, what's going to happen this late, like Carlton, they've actually got two really good key forwards. Like they've won the, the like two, two of the last three Coleman's or something. So yeah, that where he's going to have to play lockdown on either probably McKay. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how many intercept positions he actually can get, Chris. Yeah, so the one thing that could save Tanner is the fact that uh, Blitzarb's had quite a lot of CBAs, um, not necessarily as an, as a midfielder, and he was basically playing on Jack Crisp, which is a strange matchup in, the enti in its entirety. Um, but he will have yeah, to probably 21. go... Is... Yeah, he'll, he'll probably go behind the ball now. Now, I'll, I wonder... Does he take Tom Stewart's role? Because that's probably the like for like, I guess. Um, unless they want to play him locked down and maybe get Sav to play that. We just don't know that yet. But what I did notice that was very smart. And so, again, this is experience. This is just an, a, a team that's you know got a lot of guys that know what they're doing when they're entering the 50. They refused to kick it to where Rat was. They, they Once Stewart went down, I think the plan went in is don't kick it to Stewart. I don't care where you kick the ball inside 50, mm -hmm. but if you see that guy there, do not go there. That's what their yep. plan was. When that changed, the message went out. Don't kick it to rat. And so it was a very different way that they were entering the system. So the reason why he only got six and then was running to spoil was because he was out of position because the ball wasn't going to where he was. It's also why McStay didn't have a lot of touches. He was basically playing a role, get that guy out of the out of the zone of where the ball's going to drop. So yeah, it was it, it was remarkable to watch, um, but they were specifically doing that. So, um, yeah, I don't read. I'm surprised that obviously he even got 56 with his six disposals. That was really really impressive. But if I had Rat, I'd be super happy, and I would be looking forward to better scores when they play a lot worse teams that don't enter the 50 that well. So yeah, I mean, even teams. I'm just like, not. I I just don't think that'll be this week because no, he's going to have to lock down on one of the two true. big boys. Yeah. So, but, but the I good news be... is we at least get some more data to have a look at first yeah, exactly. and see yeah, exactly. how we... if if Blycarves locks down, etc. We absolutely need to see because, and again, we get another week for free. Yeah. If if he's and if he does well against week, that, we'll... if he does well against those two forwards, well, then it's all of a sudden like, wow, okay, he can take on a really good forward setup, and and you know, definitely has to be considered. All right, yeah. Kangas uh, Eagles wraps us up. Yeah, I think that we're done with that way that game, guys. Unless you want to talk about Ollie Henry and how shitty he was. But oh, mate, actually, I was going to bring it up from a footy perspective. That was so entertaining, and that was, like yeah. the way he kicked the goal, getting into the crowd, then Darcy Moore's tackle on him. Like that—that that was so just good. some 
enter- did great guys, entertaining footy. Did you guys see when Mason Cox kicked his goal? He did the... Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Great. Oh, Mason's good for some value like that. So I love the whole by play of that. It's just it's just brilliant footy. Some you get someone like Kane Courts to be like, oh, that shouldn't happen on fields. Concentrate on the game. I'm like, ah, oh, shut up. And that this is yeah, fantastic for entertainment. The, you know, the entertainment. Ben. Yeah, Ben, I'll let okay. you go right. back to, to trying to control us. Thank you very much, man. No, yeah, so no, okay. No. Before, Kangas, Eagles. before we got on air, we had a little bit of a structure meeting. Very yeah, very but brief. mate, that that was worthwhile and talking about. Swizz, good. shut the fuck up. No. Now, <laughs> It starts off with, hey, boys, let's not talk 15 minutes per game. Let's try and keep it nice and simple, focus on Supercoach and condense each game. Yes. And it's been 35 minutes. But the first two games, games involved Richmond intro. and Collingwood, mate. That's true. You so won't see me talking about Richmond for that long. I'll tell you that for free. 